Hello, today we're going to look at visemes, which um, are sometimes mistakenly called phonemes in the animation industry, and we're also going to be looking at how to create uh, pose assets for different visemes uh, within Blender. So for this I'm going to be using the Rain character, which has been created uh, by the uh, Blender the Blender Studio, you can see the attribution information down here. Um, it's a wonderful character. And I'm just, I've got a finished set of visemes pulled up here to kind of demonstrate what they are before we launch into how to make them. Um, so the difference between a phoneme and a viseme, um, a phoneme is the fundamental sound of a language. So um, it's not necessarily, doesn't always correspond exactly to a letter but you can see there are different names of them over here. A, E, I, for instance, are generally the the same viseme. In other words, the the shape of the mouth when making the sound is uh, often the same between these different sounds. So they form one viseme. Um, so I have a variety of visemes here and uh, they allow me to lip sync to audio. So basically, if I want to um, apply a shape like this BMP here, I can just click on it from the pose library or an L or an L shape. Um, and uh, that's kind of how that works. So to launch right in, uh, it, these thumbnails are also kind of kind of a question. These thumbnails are made by Blender when you create those. So we'll talk a little bit about how to make those thumbnails for your pose assets as well. So to start, I'm going to actually just open up a clean version of the Rain character that doesn't have these visemes already made. We're not going to make a complete set in this video because once you see how to make them, um, hopefully it will make sense um, how to make the others. All right, so um, to start off with, the Rain character here doesn't have a camera, and the reason that's important is that the camera um, is actually the source of the thumbnail. So when we're creating these uh, these visemes, we want a good thumbnail so we can kind of see, we can have a good preview of what it looks like. So let's create a camera here. Shift A, make a camera. You can see that that's kind of come in at an odd angle, so let's uh, zero out that Z rotation, put our X at a straight 90, Y at zero, and then from a top orthographic view, I'm just going to kind of, oh, that's one other sort of quirk about the rain character is by default the, uh, the axes are set to local. I'm going to set them to global so it's a little more um, intuitive moving things around. So GY, I'm going to bring the camera back. GZ, I'm going to bring it up and aim it right at the face and let's look through that camera. Okay, that's actually fairly decent. Um, I'm going to edit the camera a little bit. This is a wide angle lens that they've got uh, by default here. It's a, well kind of a mid uh, mid focal length lens, 50 millimeters, but it has a little bit of that wide angle distortion, uh, kind of like taking a selfie. So I'm going to change this to 100 millimeters, zoom in for a flatter look at the face, and I'm going to change my camera to be square. So instead of 1920 by 1080, I'm just going to make sure the X and the Y are the same value. It doesn't really matter what it is. So let's uh, move in there. All right, and that's that's going to be a decent uh, thumbnail. The other thing to know about these thumbnails is that they are rendered out um, from the Workbench render engine. So if you want to see what your thumbnails are going to look like and kind of play with that, change from Cycles or EV or whatever you've got um, set as your render engine and change to Workbench, and then look at a rendered view and this is currently what my thumbnails are going to look like. Not great. So uh, let's play with that just a little bit. I'm going to change this to attributes so we can see the eyes, 
I'm going to come down here and turn off specular lighting, and that's a better thumbnail. Um, that'll be a better look for our for our thumbnails. All right, so with that in place, we are actually ready to start uh, working with the armature, with the rig. So let's select the rig here, and you can see by default, uh, we don't have any facial bones visible. So let's control tab into pose mode, go into our cloud rig settings and look at our layers. You can see IK and FK are both enabled. And because of the way these uh, pose assets work, I'm going to turn off all of the layers that I don't need. I'm going to turn on face primary and I need to turn on face extras, not because I need very many of them, but because the tongue and teeth controls are in there and I want to keep those. And I'm also going to hide every bone that I'm not going to use and you'll see why uh, I'm going to do that a little later so let's just select all these bones up here and hide them okay and let me make sure that I've got the tongue bone selectable here uh, there's an easier way to do this let's just open the mouth and there it is okay so that's that's the tongue right there that's the one I need so alt R to undo the rotation of the mouth and those are probably all the bones that I really need for the visim. As a matter of fact I think I'm even going to hide that bone um, because I don't need it so this is going to simplify the creation of my visims and it's going to make it a little harder for me to mess up um, so you'll see we've got this animation tab over here and if you don't have that in Blender it it's enabled by default in newer versions but it's uh, if you've got like an old file or something that doesn't have it you uh, you can actually enable that the animation pose library it's an add-on that is enabled by default so if you don't see that over there when you're in pose mode then go to your add-ons and make sure that's checked. I'm using version 3.6 of Blender which is the current LTS version. Alright and um, just one more thing to know about uh, pose assets they are saved as actions. So I've got my action editor open here by default and that's I think the I think that's open uh, when you download the rain blend file I think it's open by default I don't think I I don't think I changed that but uh, my action editor is here open and that's going to be important you can see in the little end menu over here tap N on the keyboard to open and close that you have a button called create pose asset that's a button that we're going to use but since these uh, are saved as actions that means that we are creating keyframes basically and everything's just gonna be it's a single it's a single frame action uh, so in order to create an action with the bones that I'm using I need to have those bones selected so I'm going to tap a to select all of these bones before I click this create pose asset even if I haven't used them all uh, because all of these bones have the potential to be involved in a visim. Okay, so to start off with, I am going to just make a couple of a couple of visims that are fairly easy to kind of kind of create um, off the top of my head. One of them is the F or uh, or possibly V visim. So I'm going to open the mouth here. Rotate that, and when we make this, when we make this uh, sound, when we make the shape of this sound, we usually expose the top teeth. I'm going to roll this lip back here, and then move it up just a little, and that's kind of kind of how we make an F or a V sound, and. I'm going to tweak that a little bit, sort of, and see, actually, I can just 
copy the pose of this, control C, control shift V to paste it, paste it X flipped if I want both sides identical. Um, I usually like to add a little asymmetry to my visemes because it gives the character a little bit more character. So we'll kind of flare one side there, but that's it's kind of a an F slash V shape, I think. That's good. Control Shift V. Okay, I think that's good. So now, if I'm ready to create, oh, and I've got uh, I have eye controls visible, which I don't need. Okay, if I'm ready to create this visim, I can tap A to select all create the pose asset and you can see there's my thumbnail but by default the name of this is just rig rain um, so down here in the action editor I can actually rename this I'm gonna call it F dash V and you can see it renames it here this little uh, book icon here this little um, library book stack is indicative that this is an asset, a pose asset. So if you unclick that, you can actually tell this not to be a pose asset anymore and it will delete its fake user and the next time you save or restart Blender, it will be deleted. So that is one way of managing these things. Um, the other thing to know about these is if you ever want to just update the thumbnail, you can actually open an asset browser and you can see the asset is here and oh, tap the N key to open up your little menu and here's the preview and you can you can change whatever's going on up here in your camera view and then click this little refresh button and it will update the thumbnail for you if you ever want to change that um, so just to kind of repeat here really quickly, I'm going to make a second uh, visim, and uh, then we'll we'll call that good for this tutorial. So I'm going to put my FV visim away. Just hit X. You can see it's still there. It's fine, but we've cleared out our workspace down here in the action editor. So. I'm going to select all these bones, Option R, or sorry, Alt R, Alt G, Alt S. That will clear out any rotation, uh, transform, or scale. And now I'm going to make, uh, let's make a, a D, like a D, D. So I'm going to bring her upper lip up, lower lip down. And this could also maybe serve as like a J, like a J, J. But uh, I think I'm going to bring the bottom jaw forward just a touch. And this, uh, this side curl of the lower lip feels a little extreme to me, so I'm going to kind of ease that up. Maybe not too much. There should be some tension in the mouth. Control C, Control Shift V to paste that, the pose of that bone X flipped and okay let's see let's close that jaw just a little more okay so that's maybe a D or a J so I'm gonna select all create a new pose asset there it is it's called rig rain again and I'm gonna call this DD-JJ that'll make it a little easier to read okay so now finally, um, hopefully that kind of gives you the gist of how to create these visemes. Um, if I want to use them now, so let's uh, deselect all of our bones. Using these pose assets, um, you can do one of two things. So I'm going to clear out my character's pose here. And if I don't have any bones selected and I just click on a pose asset, then it automatically applies to all of the bones that it can. So all of the bones that I had selected when I created that pose asset, it just moved all of those bones down here even though I don't have any bones selected. Now if I if I only select 
one bone and then click on the same asset, it's only going to apply the asset data, the pose data, to that one bone. So yeah, I moved that bone in the pose. This pose has data for that bone, so it moves it, but it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't move any other bone because I only had that one selected. So uh, application of these pose assets depends on what you have selected. Uh, the other thing that you can kind of do here that's sort of neat, and this is a little newer feature as of I think 3.5, is if you want to apply these assets uh, less than 100%, you can click and drag. So if I only want a little bit of this Vizim to show up, I can click and drag. So drag to the right, and it starts applying the pose. If I go far enough right, it gets to 100%. If I hold down E, it will allow me to extrapolate a little further. Now, oh, sorry, don't hold down E, just, uh, just tap E. If I tap E when I'm dragging, I can take it past 100%. Um, but of course, that's of limited utility. There's a point of diminishing returns there. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is if you hold down control when you tap one of these, uh, supposedly it reverses it, it, it flips it. I actually haven't had very good luck with that so far, but that's, uh, that's what I've read in the manual. So hold down control and it's supposed to flip it, but so far I haven't seen that. Anyway, I hope uh, that this tutorial is helpful and uh, we'll come back with another tutorial on actually using the Vizemes. Thanks, have a great day.